Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. This is Living in Alberta. Today we're going to look at why you should avoid moving to Sylvan Lake, Alberta unless you can handle these five negatives. Yo guys, my name is Kyle. Welcome to the channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. On this channel, we break down everything when it comes to moving to or living in Alberta. So if you do want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that subscribe button and definitely click that notification bell, guys. So you're notified every single week when a new video comes out. And if you'd like any help with the real estate needs, I am a licensed realtor in the province of Alberta. So use this information, guys. Give me a shout any way you know how. I would love to hear from you. All right, with that being said, let's get right into the video. look at five reasons why you may not or five perceived negatives about living in Sylvan Lake, Alberta. I did save the best one for last guys. So you're going to want to hang around for that one. Let's get right into it. Let's take a look at number one. And this is the biggest question that I get all the time from pretty much everybody is how busy does it get in Sylvan Lake in the summer? So the first negative is that it gets very, very busy in Sylvan Lake during the summer. Now there's not a lot of great lakes around central Alberta. Alberta as a province is not really well known for its lakes. Sylvan Lake, however, is awesome. So there's people from all over the province who come to Sylvan on hot days or for vacations. It's a very, very popular spot. And if you read online, they estimate that close to a million people will visit Sylvan Lake throughout the summer months. So that is a ton of people. Now, if you own a business in Sylvan Lake, this is fantastic business owners earn a ton of their money throughout the summer months. But the reality is, is that a lot of people are coming to Sylvan, they're on vacation, they're looking to party, they're looking to have a few drinks and looking to get in a few shenanigans. I swear to God, I'll pistol whip the next guy that says shenanigans. <clears throat> hey Farva, what's the name of that restaurant you like with all the goofy shit on the walls and the mozzarella sticks? You mean shenanigans? No. Oh. So up on Lakeshore Drive, there is going to be a lot of partying going on. You are going to have a lot of people drinking, having a really good time. And let's be honest, people who are not from Sylvan Lake aren't going to treat the town with as much respect as someone who actually lives in the town. So they might not be as adept at picking up their garbage or respecting the town like you might be because you live there. Now, most of the busyness is down on Lakeshore Drive where the beach is. That's where most of the people come to Sylvan. They stay up there. They don't venture too far back. But when you have a million people, close to a million people visiting the town throughout the summer months, the restaurants are going to get busier, the grocery stores, the gas stations. It's inevitable that it absolutely is going to get busier in Sylvan Lake in the summertime. Now, as I said, out of towners might not treat the town with as much respect as the people who live there, but I will say that the town does a phenomenal job. Every single morning, they're out on the beach, they're out around Lakeshore Drive, they're picking up all the garbage, they're making sure it's great, ready for the day. And even though I don't live in Sylvan myself, I do have a ton of friends who live there and I've helped a ton of clients move there. And they say that most of the busyness and the shenanigans and the partying, it's going to be up on Lakeshore Drive. So if you're living a few blocks back off Lakeshore Drive, it's not really a big issue. But I do get asked this question all the time, so I wanted to address it. So there you have it, guys. All right, the second perceived negative about living in Sylvan Lake. And every time I think about this one, it blows my mind. But there's no hospital in Sylvan. Sylvan Lake has just about 17,000 people, 16, 17,000 people. So it's not a small town by any means. There are much smaller communities like Innisfil, Lacombe. They all have their own hospitals. Yes, I know that Sylvan Lake is closer to Red Deer than those places, but 16, 17,000 people, no hospital. You take into consideration all of the people visiting there throughout the summertime. There's a lot of potential for injury with all the boating sports and people being on the lake and all the people in the shenanigans. Uh, that's a total weird word, isn't it? <laughs> that is a freaky <laughs> word. <laughs> very, very freaky. <laughs> so it's super surprising to me, and I don't know the answer to this, and I don't know why, but Sylvan Lake does not have its own hospital. 
It does have an urgent care center where they'll treat minor things, but anything that's serious, you're gonna have to go to Red Deer for it. So maybe you're in that retirement age, maybe you're looking to kinda enjoy life and just live by the lake, but maybe having healthcare really close by is very important to you. So if that's the case, just keep in mind, Silver Lake just has an urgent care center. Anything else, you're heading into Red Deer. However, it's not that far. You could probably be in Silver Lake to the Red Deer Hospital in 20 minutes. And obviously if you're going by ambulance, which hopefully you're not, you're gonna get there a lot quicker. Oh, I can't feel my legs. In comes a meat wagon. Woo, woo, woo. All right, the third reason that people might perceive as being a negative about living in Sylvan Lake is that it does not have a Catholic high school. So if you have children in that age group, or your children in high school in the Catholic school division, you're going to be bused to Red Deer. So French immersion students will go to Notre Dame and English students will go to St. Joseph's. And there is no plans in the immediate future to have one built either. So it could be a while before we actually see a Catholic high school in Sylvan Lake. So if you do have kids in this age group, it is definitely something that you may want to keep in mind. All right, let's take a look at number four. And this one is just something to kind of be more aware of rather than potentially a negative. Obviously you're closer to a body of water, you're going to have a higher water table there. A lot of the, not a lot, there's been a few neighborhoods in Silver Lake that have been rebuilt on reclaimed swampland. So just about every single home in Silver Lake is going to have a sump pump. Now, is there an increased risk for potential water issues? Yeah, I would say it's definitely higher than somewhere like Red Deer or a smaller town not close to a body of water. However, the sump pumps, they really, really do a, a great job, guys. It's just something you have to be aware of. So you wanna make sure that your sump pump is maintained, that it has a battery backup, and potentially you might even want to have a second sump pump just in case that first one goes down. I think I've mentioned in other videos, one of the biggest reasons that sump pumps fail is because people are having them running off electricity, and what's the first thing that goes out in a big rainstorm? is the electricity, the power goes out. So if you don't have a battery backup or you don't have a second sump pump or a generator possibly, that heavy rainfall, it's gonna be filling up into your basement and that sump pump is not gonna be active and pumping it away from your house. Are you sure? <laughs> now, most of the time, people don't even notice them. They can be a little bit annoying because you can hear them going off in a heavy rainfall or you know, you're driving down the street in Selvin Lake, you can see all the sump pumps pumping the water out into the streets, which means they're actually doing what they're supposed to do. But Selvin Lake, does have a higher water table, obviously because it's right by the lake and you are going to have a sump pump there. Just be aware that every home is going to have them there and you know it might be a little bit noisy. And during heavy rainfalls, you are going to hear that sump pump going off. All right guys, we are on the last reason why you may want to not live in Sylvan Lake or one of the perceived negatives. And recently I helped some clients move here from White Rock, BC and I was having a conversation with a gentleman and he informed me that Lakeshore Drive is one of the most dangerous stretches of highway in all of Canada. And he asked me if I actually knew that. And of course I'm like, oh yeah, I know that. But in my head I'm thinking, what the heck is he talking about? Oh man, what? you're just ruining it. <laughs> if you've been on Lakeshore Drive before, you know that there is a huge speed bump about every, I don't know, 30 feet. So you can't go more than 30, 40 kilometers on there, and it's, it's quite a low speed limit too. So I'm thinking in my head, what does he mean? Why is this a dangerous stretch of road? Please tell me you know what to do at the first turn. Well, oh, right. What he told me was, is that male drivers are likely to get in accidents on Lakeshore Drive because of all the bikinis along the beach. Now, I hope that doesn't offend anybody. I don't want any women's rights groups calling me and giving me trouble. I just thought it was hilarious, um, you know, a cool moment that I shared with one of my clients and I think it's a friggin' hilarious joke too. So I wanted to share it with you guys, but Lakeshore Drive definitely can have its issues. So I just wanna say that it's super tough come up with negative reasons or potential cons as to why you may or may not want to live in these places. I know that the last one was a little bit of a joke, but there are some other things that you might want to consider. Silver Lake being busy is definitely one of them, but it is a fantastic community and it's probably the best lake town in Alberta in my opinion. It is a great community for young families. It is a great community for everyone. You're super close to Red Deer. 
However, here are some perceived negatives that you might want to consider if you're thinking of moving there. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video, guys. If you did, please hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and definitely click that notification bell, guys. And if you would like any help with your real estate needs, give me a shout. Use this information on the screen right now. I would love to hear from you guys. Reach out to me any way you know how. All right, I will see you guys next week. Cheers.